<laughs> I may have. <laughs> so I figured I had to bring my gear along uh, for the journey. Um, also, oh, I better not lose my mic here. Let's put this here. So yes, as uh, uh, Veronica shared uh, last year, I should actually add that I'm on the organizing team and I wasn't expecting to speak at all. It just so happened that I was chatting to some of them about this walk I did. Uh, I didn't attend that next meeting and next thing I found out was that apparently I was speaking about my experience. <laughs> I was volunteered, so, um, so here I am. Uh, so yes, um, just to sort of bring you to uh, Spain. Uh, so around sort of June time of last year, I'd been, you know, a few months I'd been sort of working around as a freelancer and looking at ways of setting up my own business, not quite knowing exactly what path to take on. Uh, and also been in that wonderful sort of freeing scenario of essentially being able to take time off. I don't have family, so it was kind of, well, I have a little cat, which my parents had to sort of take care of while I was away. Uh, but I was sort of in this great scenario. I thought, gosh, I can actually really take five weeks off and go and walk these 750K in these shoes and uh, across Spain. And I had uh, two friends of mine from the States that uh, joined me. I should add, my accent I know has a bit of an American tinge, but my mother's from East Belfast. <laughs> and, uh, and I've sort of grown up in and around uh, here, and my father's American. So. so to bring you to Spain, so I guess, you know, along the way, uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Camino de Santiago. It's quite a, you know, there are thousands of people go every year to walk across uh, this northwestern part of Spain. It's sort of partially a Christian pilgrimage, and it's also people of sort of no religion or other religions also go along sort of for the challenge of it as well as for their own religious spiritual uh, reasons. And um, it's, um, for me, it was uh, very much a, a scenario that I was trying to figure out, you know, what are some of the things that I can figure out that I want to do with my business as I go forward. And um, I guess I, I sort of came out with sort of 10 key learnings from this experience. So the first of these being that it's important to set yourself goals uh, and to do this, uh, you kind of have to know where you're going as opposed to sort of circling around uh, sort of aimlessly. So it's important, uh, especially within a business context, to, to def define and set your goals. Uh, in this instance, our goal was pretty clear. We had to get to this city, Santiago de Compostela, and we had to do so on foot. Uh, so, of course, once you've set up your goals, the next thing is to sort of determine your route. So I'm a sort of strategist, consultant, so of course you think, okay, what's my strategy going to be here now that I've defined the goals, we've got to set up um, how we're going to get there and what's our plan. Um, so the plan in this scenario was that we were starting in the French Pyrenees in Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port, uh, which is actually the hardest part of the walk, so it's a way to really sort of get rid of the, <laughs> the ones that are sort of going to drop off because it's, it's in the Pyrenees. So for two days you're walking in the Pyrenees. I should add, I did no training for this whatsoever. <laughs> and they kind of say the training really is just doing the walk. It's more of an endurance uh, kind of <laughs> scenario that you have here. So, you know, determining your route and, and your plan to, to reach your goal. It's important to be prepared. This was uh, everything that I had with me for five weeks. It was great to wake up in the mornings and figure out, well, which of my three t-shirts am I going to wear today? <laughs> and, oh gosh, I better get that one washed when I get to my next location. So um, it was kind of a very freeing scenario that <laughs> you, you just have to worry about this at Rucksack and, and basically carrying that along. Um, it's also important to obviously, you know, we've talked about sort of, it's, it's kind of a, you're preparing your resources for your plan to go forward and your strategy. Uh, it's great. Also, the, you know, there are many guidebooks written about the, the Camino, so this was sort of very instrumental as we went along. It kind of taught us to be flexible, though, because some of the maps that they show you show relatively sort of, sort of basic uh, movements along, and then you kind of figure, okay, we're not having to go uphill too much. And then the reality of that is that there is quite a few hills along the way. And it's not really the 20K that it looks on paper, it's more like 32K. Uh, so, you know, be prepared, but you also have to be flexible as you do in life and in work, that things don't always go the way you expect them to go or according to the plan. Um, the next element was, I guess, you know, well, just Deciding to take on uh, this walk and this uh, sort of initiative was quite a risk in itself. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, as uh, some of the 
people before me have spoken about, I mean, just embarking on your own business and doing that is obviously a risk in itself. Um, but it's, it's stuff that you kind of have to do. And I'm, I'm lucky that I've sort of been raised and had the support to just sort of feel that that net is there for me if I leap for it. Um, so uh, we set off with our backpacks all prepared along the way. Now, another aspect that is kind of crucial along the Camino is really to pay attention to the signs and to not lose sight of what your goal is. Uh, I think this is obviously something that's relevant even in our own lives. It's just the element that we can often sort of lose motivation or get caught up in other things that we do slow down along the way as to reaching our goals. Uh, in this instance on the Camino, we were constantly reminded of what, where we were supposed to go. There are these yellow arrows across those 750k that tell you where you have to go. Uh, and also along the way, you, you see quite a few signs that say, you know, Camino de Santiago, or, you know, Santiago's in this direction. So it kind of reminds you. And as you get closer, you also get the nice uh, sort of uh, signs that say, you know, you're only 150k away, you're only 100k away. Uh, so that helps. Um, so again, just in life in general, to keep those in mind. Um, it takes quite a bit of effort to walk 750k, but you really do it one, one footstep at a time, one day at a time. Uh, you know, I, I kind of figure I'm pretty young and fit and could sort of you know, take it on, and uh, it was very challenging sort of for me, but oh, yeah, I saw people like men in their 70s doing this, and they were, had a f way faster pace than me along the way. You also rem have to remember that you're doing this with friends. I did this with two fellow friends of mine, uh, sort of three of us that are very sort of independent, sort of accomplished women in our own right. It could have been a complete recipe for disaster, <laughs> the three of us walking for five weeks. Uh, we had our challenges along the way, sort of disagreements and so forth, but I have to say that's actually probably my, my proudest learning from that is that we really grew um, to overcome these challenges and really drop the challenges. We didn't hang on to the differences that we had and we became much closer as a result. So they're really like my sisters there. Uh, okay, you have to honor your limitations. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was about, I don't know, week three or so <laughs> into it. I was lucky. I only had one blister. There were people that had ridiculous amounts of blisters along the way. But it does take its toe on you. It takes its toe on your ligaments and uh, all these elements. So I think the thing is, is why it's important to push yourself. Also, you know, don't overdo it in general in life. It's important to know that you have certain limitations. You don't want to get sick. You don't want to injure yourself. <laughs> so, you know, pace yourself. Um, have fun. Uh, I think that the most wonderful thing about this trip was really, um, even though we had goals that we were trying to reach every day, uh, the main thing was that you could just sort of sit and enjoy the view and be very, sort of live in a very present. I think that was the, the simplicity of it was a wonderful experience to be just walking along and seeing the various views along the way. Um, the very, because we went through all sorts of different landscapes. and. Um, so that was towards the end when we reached the coastline. Um, then, I mean, once you reach your goals, or maybe you've changed your goals, I think the important thing is to still keep going and set yourself new goals. Uh, from a walking perspective, there isn't just one <laughs> Camino to Santiago. I happen to do the most famous one, the Camino Frantes, uh, the sort of the blue line there, but there are many walks, so I am definitely inspired to go and, and try some more, maybe not as long, and I probably won't be able to have the five weeks this time uh, to do that. So. Again, sort of keep going. But I think to finish off, um, the most significant learning and really confirmation along the way is that it's so important to surround yourself with support and encouragement. I couldn't have done this without you know, my two friends and the various people that we met uh, along the way and the friendship and companionship. And I think when I think of encouragement, even within the business element, here in Northern Ireland, we have a tendency to put ourselves down, whether it's that we do it to ourselves or we let other people put us down, like, who do you think you are? You know, sure, you can't manage that. Um, I'm lucky enough that I've sort of always had family and friends that have supported me and encouraged me along the way in everything I've wanted to do. And if people don't have that, I think we can even just look in the room around us to see that there's plenty of encouragement here today. So I know that the E in TED stands for education, but I also like to think that it can stand for encouragement because I know that TED has been a very encouraging influence on me. So there you have it.